it's Sharon here. Welcome back to my channel for those who are returning and welcome to any new subscribers that may be visiting for the first time. So a little bit of a different video today. I wanted to work on some bits and pieces that I have laying around in my craft room for various reasons and I will share with you why I have this pile here that I'm planning on drawing from. You can see it's a bit of a shambles. Um, I have some unfinished ephemera pieces here. I think these belong here as well. These were pieces that I started to create in a video that I didn't end up uploading. It kind of ended up... I wasn't having a good creative day. Let's just put it that way. And I did a couple of bits and pieces and I didn't quite finish them or wasn't sure how to finish them. Needless to say, I never uploaded the video and these have been sitting around ever since. So I have those I wanted to share with you and perhaps finish today or I will share with you and finish them off camera. And then I have some bits and pieces here. Some of them are pieces of ephemera that I created as part of Roxy's Weekly Challenge um, at the beginning of a challenge. For instance, these pieces here. And some are pieces that are left over. So these ends here, I think, are pieces that I've cut off of envelopes as part of the challenge. Um, and even the backs of the envelopes here. And also the tabs off the envelopes. So, And there's a couple of pieces of paper from Junk with Steph that were in, in amongst that pile. So I just wanted to work with what I have these have been sitting on my desk for some time and it's time to just get busy and start finishing them off. So these pieces here are just collage papers using Junk with Steph papers. And then I've popped a piece of tea stain paper on the back of them and I never seem to have gotten any further than that. I don't know why, but... I'm just going to trim these off. They've been sitting in a basket to my right. I will admit the basket has shifted a few times now since it's been placed there. Um, and I was in here. I was actually really keen to start working on the envelopes that I did in my last video. And... I saw these on my desk and I was just like, you know what, I need to just start getting serious about finishing off some of these pieces. So I didn't think I went quite to the edge of that. So I hope you're all fabulous. I am really enjoying being back in my craft space. Hubby, <laughs> Hubby is out at the moment, um, as he often is when I video. And I shared with him that I finished my video, which was the Roxy's Weekly Challenge video in a rush because he arrived home sooner than I'd planned and he was so apologetic bless his heart um I was just like I should know better than to think I won't get caught out and I start later in the day it's actually morning here so at the moment so I should be good um but yeah, I just, I've said to him before, I just, I don't seem to be able to video as easily when he's home. I kind of get distracted by him. Um, and then I've said before, I talk really quietly. I don't even know why. It's instinctive. It's kind of like, I don't know, when I was growing up and we were in a room and there were other people and they were doing things, if... If they were perhaps watching TV or something like that, then, you know, we had, be, had to be mindful of our noise levels. And I think that's all it is. I think it's just that it takes me back to, you know, being mindful of what other people are doing in the same space as you. So it's not like he has a problem with it. It's, it's purely my problem. 
or it's not really a problem. It's just, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable speaking at a normal tone when I know he's in the next room, perhaps watching TV or doing something else. So, so I just try not to video when he's here. He laughs at me. He thinks I'm quite crazy. But then a lot of people do. I'm looking for this. So I think these are different sizes slightly. Just trying to decide what I want to do with them. I'm kind of thinking about a big side pocket on the page for those. Although I've backed them, so I could make them journaling cards, although they're huge journaling cards. Or I could make them a flip, which if I was going to do, I probably shouldn't have cut the excess paper off. What to do, what to do, what to do. Well, I ponder that. <laughs> so much for finishing things off. I'm going to show you these. So... These are just little banners that I've made. Um, and they just get glued or sewn onto the corner of the top of a page. And all I've done is I've taken... So these are glue book pages from a Reader's Digest that were folded into three. And I've just cut them at varying lengths. Um, I can share with you lengths that I've chosen so the largest is about four inches the next size is roughly three and a quarter that's at the peak and the last one is at two and a quarter and then I cut one in the center and then took my scissors so I've just guesstimated the center and then gone from corner to the point and from corner to the point and I then use that as a guide to cut the rest of the sections out of the bottom for each of the sizes so they're all roughly the same and then all I've done is layered one of each of the sizes here starting with the biggest at the bottom and working my way towards the smallest at the top and I've topped the piece at the top with just a piece of pattern paper from junk with Steph and finished it off with some lace I really love the way they've turned out I haven't even sewn those pieces of lace on I may end up doing that I may end up sewing them but I will potentially make more of those I just don't know that I'll do them on camera but I did want to share with you and then these here are some Rita Donnelly flips that I made and I had this idea when I was doing my video that I didn't share with you all that I wanted to make some little envelopes out of some scrap pieces of paper so they just fold up I have glued these pieces down um, so I made those I made the Rita Donnelly flips and then I went oh wouldn't they be cute on top of the Rita Donnelly flips so I turned this one into a pocket it's a slightly larger little envelope and this is a little stud image from a junk with Steph kit that I did just go looking for so the kit is frames labels and more from junk with Steph and she has these cute little they remind me of little rivets on a pair of jeans or something like that and I've used that to create a tuck for the envelope and that just folds down and offers some more journaling space and tucks back in and these are pieces of ephemera out of one of her kits and I don't remember which kit it was it could have been the eclectic ephemera kit and I was considering popping them in there but I, I then decided I wasn't sure but I do really like them in there um so potentially I'll just ink those and pop them in there and leave them unattached. That way they can be taken out and written on the back. So I thought they were really sweet. So I've got a couple more there I can make. So I wanted to share those with you. 
this is good this is a really good thing um okay so coming back to these what do i do with these or do i cut them in half and turn them into journaling cards how big are they about seven and a quarter I cannot remember what I had decided to do with them. Let me see. Because I backed them, I'm kind of thinking that I was planning on perhaps having them as a flip out or something like that. But I've now cut the... I might just cut that at, that's about three and a quarter, I think. And turn them into some journaling cards, I'm thinking. Or a journaling card in a pocket. That's kind of fun. That would actually slot in there, I think. Okay, let's do that. Not quite what I think I had planned for them, but at least they will be used and stop sitting on my desk. Okay, so I'm going to just punch out a little indentation. Oops. <laughs> I get really nervous when I do the um, the little circular punches on these that I'm not centre. I'm kind of trusting my instinct here and I keep thinking, what if I'm off centre? I can't go back. I used to be the measure first kind of person. So I would measure roughly halfway and then use that as a guide. I'm, I'm being braver now by going by instinct, but I do worry that it will be so off-centre that I will just go, oh my gosh, I cannot use that. Okay, so I want to keep them together. And what do I want? I want the ink. I've moved this. It used to be on my side, but I've got other baskets and things on my side now, so... Or to my side, I should say. So I've backed the pockets when I didn't need to, but that's okay. And I've just tabbed the top. <laughs> I was going to put these in here. Well, that could go that way. That doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Goodness me, talk about tricking myself. I do like it when a happy accident kind of works out for the best. Which is probably just my luck because I <laughs> seem to have a lot of happy accidents. Okay, to, to get this mess off my desk. And then the last one. I like it that way. So that works.
goodness me, I really do need to change that, don't I? Just wondering where I've put the new ones because I've shifted a few things in my room since I used them last. I used to have a set of drawers to my left under my desk and I've moved them to the craft desk that sits opposite me now. I think they were in there but I think I've shifted them so I'm just going to have a look because I cannot deal with this mess every time I use my ink. I just excuse me for a moment. One new ink pad while well, I'm thinking about it. Sorry about this guys. just I think I had meant to do that much sooner and I had forgotten okay well they make really beautiful pockets and journaling cards so what to put on them I think I might like to use some of my art vintages images white i'm just looking i have red at the back i did really love the tones of the red what colors do i have here to work with there's sort of a ready on this one here I'm hoping that's in camera Yes, it is. Sorry about bumping. So this kit is called Art Vintages Red Flowers 4. Okay, again, I'm space poor because I have lots of things on my desk. Kind of steering more towards the pinker reds. I do really like that now that I've brought, brought it closer. I think I'm just going to go with my first instinct there. Okay, so what are these? Purple. This set here are the... I've got it written on this little piece of paper. Art Vintages Prank Cards Kids 3. Isn't that cute? I don't mind that. Kind of looking for nature, outdoor, <laughs> a turkey and an owl in a tree. Sounds like a story. Sweet. Kind of like the simplicity of that. For those who aren't aware, I am on the design team for both Junk With Step, which is what these papers are on the pockets and journaling cards. I'm also on the design team for Art Vintages, so 
I am super lucky to be able to showcase the digital works for both of those amazing digital creators on Etsy. That's really pretty too. I like that. Hmm. There's two different styles taking me here. This is a, the colour is just really calming for me. And this here, I kind of visualise her in the garden thinking about the flowers. So I really like that. I don't know. You know, I can't let it go until I find just the right match. Isn't that just the sweetest image? Okay. So I believe that's only half of that kit. So yes, this is also uh, Vintage's Playing Cards 3. There's some smaller images here. It's kind of cute. That one. No, the colour of this works better for me. Something about the colours with this little tiny piece of pink here that I'm really liking. I'm going to go with that one. I still really like the colour of the other. I really like that too. But that's just... It's taking me to a calm, happy place, Just laying in the hammock out in the garden. Okay, so that's those two. What about this one? It's got Christmas written on it. sure the orientation for these is going to be quite right. That's okay. Kind of wondering about a white flower for this one.
just looking at colors and tones. I don't mind that. I kind of like the way that pops on there. quite cool here today my fingers aren't quite working properly yet I kind of like that I don't know why I think the green there is working really well with that green that's my favorite so far some pinks in here that might work with the pink in not quite to go with that one I think it's the delicateness of it that I really like against that background okay so I'm just going to pop those away Coming across another drawer this one here I kind of have peachy tones the yellows might be really pretty so this is Art Vintage's Yellow Flowers 2. That's quite pretty. Oh, I don't know between those two. I'm doing this awkwardly, but my fingers are really cold, guys. No. Right. Hmm. I think I still really like that one. a tough call finding just the right I like the pop of that colour ooh that's kind of fun that kind of plays off the orange on the pocket the greens work I think I'm going to go with that 
So a little pop of orange there in amongst the yellow cards. So again, Art Vintages, Yellow Flowers 2. And this one here. So this is Prankard's Landscape. Kind of like that play on the oranges. Just like that. I'm going to use that. Okay. So again, Art Vintages Prankard's Landscape. Okay. So let's see what we can do with these. I also have a book page snippet roll to my right on my desk that is from Roxy's Weekly Challenge that is calling out to me to cut up and make ephemera with. It's kind of, it's almost the length of, well, not quite. It's probably half the length of my desk. It's quite a long desk there. Um, and it's sitting in front of some of those drawers that I've just pulled out. So it kind of gets caught up every now and then. And I'm like, I think I'm just going to have to cut that down and make some ephemera with it. That's really pretty on there. <laughs> Space challenged. Just picking up some cheesecloth. Which is kind of a play on this netting on the image. On the paper. Or sticky scissors. Wow, something on there is, oh, there's tape on there. <laughs> so something on there is really grabbing a hold of that cheesecloth. Okay. I'll keep this really simple, I think. to use my art glitter glue. I actually tested this before I started crafting and it was working well and now I'm just like I'm not so sure. Here it comes. Okay. Reserve the right to trim it once it's down. Yes. I 
I'm using my fabric glue to pop this image down just because it's going over the cheesecloth. Scooch it over just a fraction. I'm just tidying this up a little bit. I prefer to stick to the realms of the size of the journal card rather than having it hanging over just because it's going in and out of a pocket too. So I'm kind of steering towards the label for here. I really need to work on some ephemera storage. I've got all of these bags of fussy cut pieces and I don't have anywhere to store them. So they're sitting on my trolley in a little container, plastic tub. Kind of fun. Kind of picks up the reds in the pocket. So this is junk with Steph um, specimen labels. Yes, I had to check the title because I couldn't remember. I like it like that. And I think I will finish this one up by sewing it or sewing around it. Okay. I don't know why I feel like it needs to be on that corner there. I think I like the text here. I'm trying to decide if I want to turn that into a little pocket. Perhaps it could be a little top loading pocket. Or a side. Or I just glue it down. It'd be fun as a little top loading pocket, I think. Um You give it the tiniest little just so that we can see it's a pocket.
I'm in my head right now. I'm thinking to myself, it's so good to be doing something with these. And I'm really loving the way they're looking. Not quite sure where my paper towel has gone. Might need a fresh piece. Not like me to not have one ready. Okay, I'm thinking a label over here. I do have these words from Junk with Steph. Words by Steph, they're called. I'm wondering how they might look on there. Let's try grateful. So I've just cut the three sides out and left one attached on these. I thought it might make them easier to store. I really like that, but I'm not sure that text is working with this old world text here. So, I'm sure I have. I have these labels in a couple of different text types. I'm not sure where my others are. I'm just grateful there. I'll see if I prefer this one. I do like it up there. I think that works a little better for me. Maybe a little piece of fabric. Actually, I've got got my scrappy bin here. Well, doesn't that finish that off nicely? I like that. So using my fabric glue. I want to see the word Paris because I really like it, but I don't want my label to be straight. I want it to be at a slight angle. A little bit of glue on my fingers that's gone onto the label. Burnish that from behind. Oh, won't they be pretty on the page together? Okay, I really love those. This one I think I'm just going to pop down in the centre of the page. I might even like a piece of fabric behind there. So, I do have this little piece of curtain lace. 
like that. I don't think I realised until I popped this lace over the top how much grey there was in the pocket, which is probably why I liked the image on there. I did wonder about why I was putting a cool tone colour on a warm tone pocket with the browns that I could see. I was totally ignoring the fact that there were cool tones on there as well. Okay, I really like that. Kind of ashamed to cover that butterfly, but Okay, and then okay. I like some fabric across there. Notice. So I'm thinking I might add a little bit of glue to pop this in place and I might sew it on the sewing machine. Okay, now it's upside down. The sewing machine may not like the glue very much. Okay, I'm just going to take that to my machine and see if I can just do a quick zigzag over it. Okay, so second time a charm. The bobbin ran out while I was doing my first, I think I'd only done, like I was back stitching to begin with. Or at the beginning when it ran out. And then it gathered all of my fabric. So I had to unpick. And I thought I would have to refill my bobbin. But it turned out the bobbin had a little bit left on it. So it was enough to finish that off. I'm glad I sewed it though. I much prefer the look of the sewn fabric. Okay. And then this journaling card to go with that. Thinking something soft underneath, maybe even just some white cheesecloth. A very large piece here. Where am I? These scissors are much better, they're not as tacky. I'm just looking, I've got the factory edge there, so. Just 
trying to cut that edge away. That's the back note. I'm really just checking the way that's sitting on the journal card and whether I'm happy with that, and I am. Very tacky hands right now. So coming in with more glue. That's wanting to fray and I probably shouldn't have done that yet. I can get that off my hands. I'm going to trim that little knot, became a knot from the glue. I'm going to pop that down there. It's a very bright focal point in the on the journal card compared to the pocket, but I kind of like the contrast when they're together. I do have some tacky glue down here. Oh, that's so pretty. So what do I want? On the top of the journaling card. I'm wondering about. <laughs> I really have shifted things around and confused myself in my craft room. Okay. Are they in here? Oh, actually. No, those little images are from Art Vintages as well. It's a kit that I printed at, I think it was contact sheet size. I have moved them. I'm looking for my Roxy Creations labels. Oh, I hadn't considered a green label. That could be fun. Not wrong green. No, that's not working for me. Is a red? No, it's not working for me either. Brown it is. No, I like that label. Just need to work out the placement. I'm getting hungry. I think my belly's starting to grumble at me. No. Uh, 
No, I thought I would like that, but I really don't. Okay. Don't mind it, but I'm not loving it. I don't mind it like that. Right there, maybe. Again, this will be sewn around. Is that the right way up? No, no, it's not. That's better. Please work glue. Here we go. Good job. You can do it. Put some down here. And I haven't inked my label. So much glue on my fingers right now. Okay, love that. That's two pockets and cards finished. This one here. some white fabric under that and I don't think I have any nearby the right size but I do have this I'm not even on camera sorry guys I'm just going to tear from this I don't want a really large piece Oops. Okay. I had white fabric in my fabric basket, but it is in strips, which isn't what I wanted for here. I want to make sure I can see that orange on the paper behind and I pop this down because that's kind of the thing that drew me to the focal images that I've chosen. It's really lovely orange here. I can still see that, so I'm going to lock that in. Where does this come to? It kind of covers that whole butterfly wing. The butterflies are just not winning today. on oh my god 
I'll show you real quick. Thought maybe I'd prefer it at the top, but I don't. I'm not sure I want anything else on there. I'm going to move to the journaling card. While I think about that, I'm not sure. Because I have a white there, I feel like I'd like a white on the journaling card behind here as well. And I think I might stick to the cheesecloth because it's so soft and delicate. And I do really love that look. I'm just going to straighten this up slightly. <laughs> I said straight, didn't I? Yep. Something so pretty about that journaling card. The colours are just, they're making me happy. The papers are gorgeous, Steph. love that okay again I'll trim it down once it's glued down I've spotted the numbers on the paper under here I'm such a numbers girl and I'm like I'm covering the numbers up really love these scissors they're Fiskars I think they were called mixed media scissors and I first saw them on Gail Augustinelli's channel um, and I ummed and ahmed for the longest time about buying them and I've even started fussy cutting with them so these journaling cards or images from art vintages most of those um, I have used those scissors to fussy cut them with and they just made such easy work of it. Okay. I'm wondering about a number label for this. I love the simplicity of it. These are from Shabby Dabby Doodah. I believe I'm just checking my label yes number tabs they're called don't mind that oh, I might like that better hmm. I actually like the red notice I've picked four on each of them Oh my goodness, I think I'm going to use the red one. Who knew? Orange and red. So not me, but I really, really love it. For those of you who may be new to my channel, um, I don't have a tendency to steer towards reds and oranges when I'm creating, but having said that, I'm finding that I love them more and more. 
I don't know. I just, I must be finding the right application for them or something because I even found myself looking at some orange sari ribbon just recently on Etsy and thinking to myself, oh, I really love that. That would be so fun to play with in my crafting. And I think part of the reason I've developed a real love of orange sari silk is because of Ali Mays. I've noticed that when I've watched her craft, she has a real tendency for orange. And I really love what she does with it. So, Andrea, I, I can't blame you. I kind of thank you because I wouldn't have thought that I would be drawn towards oranges and reds the way I have been lately. Now, do I want anything on here? I'm wondering about one of these specimen labels on here. And I kind of like this one because... She says, as she realises, you cannot see. It has the red on there, which kind of draws. I think I'm going to pop that there. Kind of draws the eye to both of them. Balances it out. I just like it. I'm going to pop that down like that. I need to be really careful when I take these. So they're knitting needle covers that I have on my glue bottles. And I have to be really careful when I take them off because I was using it yesterday. I don't know if it was during my video. I feel like it may have been. And I pulled the whole top off my uh, glitter glue. And then after I finished videoing, I think it was during the video. And then after I finished videoing, I went looking for a pin to try and clear my glitter glue head before I put it back on and my pin fell apart so I now no longer have a workable pin to clear my art glitter glue and I'm just like oh my goodness that's the second one that I've had fall apart so I'm really really sad about that I've kept the pin and I've kept the head but I have to try and push them together before I can use it to clear the glue and that's it happened to the the other pin that I had as well so I think I'm going to leave them like that I think I just want to sew around them I thought I might add a little bit of fabric or something but I don't think it needs it I love those I'm going to sew around them each piece but I'm going to call that done I kind of was thinking I was going to work with the other pieces of ephemera that I showed you at the beginning of this video but I really really love these so they are our pockets and tags that we've created in today's video just setting them up so they look gorgeous I love them I love them so much thank you so so much for joining me while I've made these everybody um, a huge, huge thank you to Steph from Junk with Steph and also to Marisian from Art Vintages for allowing me to showcase your beautiful digitals. And a special mention to Shabby Dabby Doodah, whose labels I also used, and to Roxy Creations, Rachel at Roxy Creations. I think that was all of the um, digital kits that I used today. Um, I've had lots of fun with this. I'm super excited to have those pieces of ephemera made out of the papers that I had already collaged and to be able to add them to my stash. So please, everybody, stay safe, stay inspired and happy crafting. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now.